Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can get a Chainlink node up and running using only the AWS console. This tutorial is going to be following the official Chainlink documentation on how to get a node running. So if you get stuck, I'll link to their page down below so you can go there to troubleshoot. As you can see, I'm here in my AWS console right now. I'm assuming that you already have an AWS account set up, but if you don't, it's pretty easy. Just go Google AWS, Amazon, and then set up your account from there. So the first tool that we're going to be using is EC2. So you can just type in the top um, EC2. And so as it says here, what this is doing is it's we're going to create a virtual server in the cloud. So once you're in EC2, go over to Launch Instance. And here we can choose um, our distribution of Ubuntu. For this, uh, we actually want to use Amazon Linux, which is optimized um, for their EC2 instances. According to the Chainlink docs, you only need 10 gigs of storage and 2 gigs of RAM to run a node, as long as you're not operating an Ethereum node um, on the same server. For us, we're going to be using an external server to run our Ethereum node, so we can go ahead and select, um, let's see. So we want two gigs of memory. So we can select uh, this T2 small instance. Okay. And that's it. We can use the default settings. So go ahead and launch the instance. For key pair, Go ahead and choose a new key pair and um, go ahead and choose your name. For me, I'm doing the CL tutorial. What this does is it gives you a private key. So if you want to SSH into your, um, your instance, you can do that. We probably won't be using that in this tutorial. Okay. We've launched our instance, so go ahead and go back to your EC2 dashboard to view the instance. In the EC2 dashboard, you can go to running instances to see the instance that we just launched. From here, you can click on the instance ID so that we can connect to our instance. Once you click that, go ahead and click Connect, and that will bring us into a terminal inside our instance. We're inside our Chainlink instance terminal. The first thing that we need to do is install Docker for our Chainlink instance. We can copy those instructions from the Chainlink docs. It may take a minute to install. Okay, now we use the sudo gpassword a user command um, to add our EC2 user uh, as a Docker user. Next, we'll go ahead and create a directory uh, for our Chainlink node. We're going to be using um, Chainlink Ring B, so let's just call this Chainlink Ring B. Okay, now we need to create a config file. Um, with environment variables for our Chainlink node to look at. I'm copying this directly from the Chainlink docs. Here, we're basically echoing this string, which is the config for our, our Chainlink node, and we're putting it inside the directory that we just created. Next up, we have to hook up our node to an Ethereum client. We're going to be using Infura, where we can set up a free Ethereum node that we can connect to. Go ahead and sign up using the Get Started. I have to put in my real information, so I'll be back once I create an account and verify it in our email. Once you've verified your Infura email, you can go ahead and hop up back onto the website and you'll see this dashboard. Go ahead and click this Get Started and create your first project to access the Ethereum network. We're going to name it um, CL Rink B node.
Once you log in to your Ethereum project, you'll see a few endpoints that you can use to access your Ethereum node. For us, we have to make sure that we select RinkB as our test network. The important URL to copy is this WWS endpoint. That's our WebSocket endpoint that we're going to use for our Chainlink node. Now we can add our ETH URL from Infura to our Chainlink environment variables, just like we did with the last set of variables. So I'm going to paste that right into here and go ahead and hit enter. I accidentally ran the command without changing the variable first. If you do that, it's easy to fix. All you have to do is open up the environment file. To open up the file, go ahead and use vim and then the location of the file right here in order to open it up. Now, if you don't know how to use vim, it's pretty simple. All we have to do is click I to go into interactive mode. And then we can go to the place we want to delete using our cursor and just delete that. Hit escape to exit interactive mode and then use colon WQ, which writes the changes and then quits Vim. Perfect. Now we can check and make sure that everything looks good. We can check using the cat command to print out the contents of that file. Next up, we can set up a Postgres database to connect to our Chainlink node. Go ahead and hop back over to your AWS management console and then search RDS in the toolbar. Once you're in RDS, you can go ahead and create a database. Select the Postgres SQL database. And then go ahead and select free tier. Here you can select an identifier for your database. This is different than the database name, which we'll get to later. I'm naming mine CL Tutorial DB. Next, select a master username and a password. Make sure you remember this. Once you have your password, we can scroll down and then we can unselect, deselect, enable storage auto scaling. Scroll down some more. Here we can click on additional configuration and set our database name. We're going to need to put this in later for our chain link node to be able to access the database. I'm going to name mine RinkB CLDB. Deselect enable automatic backups. And now you're ready to go ahead and hit create database. You should see your database in this list of databases. But once that's done, you'll be able to see an endpoint um, that we'll actually use to connect to our chain link node. Go ahead and wait a minute and then come back once your database is deployed and you have that endpoint node. All right, we're back. So as you can see, we have an endpoint now um, and a port number for our database. So let's hop back over to the instance and connect it to our port. Sometimes your instance will freeze if you're doing things in other windows. If that happens, you can safely close the, the tab and then reopen and reconnect to the instance. Okay, let's go ahead and copy the database command from the Chainlink docs. And paste that into our instance. Now we need to set five values, the username, password, server, port, and database. Our username is what we um, created when we were creating our database. So for me, that's Postgres. I'm gonna skip the password for now. And then the server is going to be the endpoint value that's given in to us on our uh, database page. So here, this endpoint, we can go ahead and copy that and then paste that into that value. I'm sorry, we want to delete the, the dollar signs too. It 
The port number is also on our database page. For me, that's 5432. And then the database name is the name we set for our database. If you go to your database, and then you go to configuration, you can see the DB name. So for me, that's ring B C L D B. So now that everything's there, I'm going to go ahead and enter my password off camera and then run the command. All right, before we are ready to start our chain link node, first we need to pull the chain link Docker from the chain link Docker hub. So go ahead, open that in a new tab and then copy whichever version of chain link you want to run. For me, I want to run the 0.10.0 version. So I'm going to copy this command and paste that into our instance. All right, that downloaded pretty quick. Now we're ready to actually run our chain link node. Copy the command from the chain link docs for starting the chain link node and then paste that into the instance. First, before we run it, we have to change this version. Remember, I selected the 0 0.10.0 .0 version, but if you selected something different, go ahead and put that in. Now we can go ahead and run that command to start our node. Awesome, it worked. Our chain link node is ready to get started. First, we need to create a key store password, which will create a password for the chain link wallet that is created. Make sure that you remember this password because this is how you will access your link tokens on your Chainlink wallet. All right, I went ahead and typed the password and confirmed it. They require a very secure password, so make sure that you have it memorized so you write it down. Now it will prompt you to enter an API email. Then go ahead and create a new password to, to access the Chainlink node operator API. Congrats, that's all it takes to start your own Chainlink node. If you want to access the operator GUI, you can tunnel via SSH using the AWS SDK, but I'm not gonna get into that in, that in this video. If you wanna see another video on how to actually fulfill requests and start earning link tokens from your node, please hit the subscribe button. If the video was helpful, please hit the like button as it really helps out the channel. Thanks and I'll see you in the next tutorial.